Just because you're a cop, why should you have the right to tote a gun around just because you have a badge? And you're saying we shouldn't be armed? Yeah, you shouldn't have guns at all. Okay, next time there's an active shooter going into a university, then we're just gonna let him shoot all the students. You know what, um, I can't do this. I'll do this episode my wife. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Cops should not carry guns. I mean, there are so many countries in this world that do not have this level of violence within its law enforcement department or any other department. <clears throat> Guns themselves are not the issue. It's the finger behind the gun because you don't know the mentality, the mind, you know, the um, heart of the person. And people, things trigger people and they snap. And no one exempt. Police officers are human beings too. They can snap. If you took guns away from the uniform, I guarantee you, like, half of them would not be there working, no, you know? it's the power. If you had to struggle to, to submit a, um, a perpetrator and, to, like, actually do work, police work, like, it's, it's not just about reaching for your gun 99% of the time. Yeah. So it's like if the gun wasn't part of the uniform, a lot of them wouldn't, wouldn't take that enabling role that they want to take as officers, you know? Right in front of my building, I was harmed by an older person, older man. When I got away, I went to the police, the detective took me to the hospital, everything, checked me out. You know what the <laughs> police officer did, with the, having a gun and everything else? Pulled me over, saying he was taking me back home, pulled me over on a dark side of a street and raped me. Because of the, the uniform, the badge, and the gun that made me freeze. But you, as a police officer, saying that you were here to protect and to serve, you allowed your power, your, your uniform, you got everything else to think, to make you think that that was okay. And this happens a lot. It happens a lot. They want to abuse other people. They want to, you know, tyrants over other people. So they choose jobs like that. Like, what? if you want to help other people, why can't you go be a humanitarian? There's oceans to clean up. Instead, like, everybody just wants to be out here taking rights away from others and abusing people and getting guns and... The moment that your moment, the moment you start copying an attitude, literally click. Let's True. let's go. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to do that to them, as they do it to us. Can the disagree step forward? If someone else has a gun, you gotta defend yourself too. You know, just the way you use it. I'm not saying that you should use guns, but I mean, if you have a gun, then you have to use it, of course, but not use it just for traffic stops or or people with mental illnesses, stuff like that, that's, the, that's out. If they have a knife or a, a, a stick, or you know, or a fork, like that doesn't justify anybody getting shot. So you're for having armed mm -hmm. police officers? Yeah, to, if that. someone else has a gun, yeah. if someone else. I believe that y'all should be armed because I believe in the Constitution. I don't believe in the policing that the police force has done throughout many communities I've been in, mm -hmm. but I do believe in rights versus laws, and I do believe that there are dangerous scenes that you go to where it is required to use them. So I have to agree that part of your, like he said, his tool belt needs to include a pistol. Okay, good, because I was about to challenge you both and say, okay, so you mean to tell me that what happened at Michigan State University with an active shooter killing five students, or Ubaldi, where they went into an elementary school and killed children. The Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, what happened over 10 years ago. You're sitting there telling us that we shouldn't be carrying firearms? Yeah, you shouldn't. Like, if you guys are just traffic cops and stuff like that, you guys shouldn't. No, I, if you guys are like a not, SWAT team. Okay, yeah, you're not answering my question. Like I said, I'm just going based on what you said. You exactly. called me a predator. I'm like, I never yeah. done that in my life, right? I've been in situations where I've been shot at. I had two members of my department die in the last two months. I've been in situations where I've needed my firearm. I've needed every tool of my belt in my career. If you would go out and then see half of the stuff I see, you may change your perception That's about true. what you see. It's, it's dangerous. So you can't call for backup? What does me calling for backup have anything to do with so this? So if way? you work if you were at county, okay, say in my Which area. I'm a county cop. Right. And and in my area, I mean you have miles and miles of nothing around you. Your closest partner is maybe, maybe if you're lucky, twenty minutes away. 
okay? In the meantime, I've got somebody that's, that has me at gunpoint, and if I don't have a gun on my hip, I'm dead. I am a dead man walking because I have nothing that can go up against another gun. But how do you think felons feel? There's tasers, okay. pepper balls, okay. like... Societal issues are not on the police. Right. Like, I'm not stripping you of your rights, right? That is not... I, it, you can vote. I don't give a shit. You can vote. You can carry a gun. You can do all that. That is not my... Personal. That is not my job in life. My job is, you've been... Hey, you've been accused of a crime. I gotta take you to jail because that, this and that and the third, I'm done. You're saying that we should have pepper spray, tasers, to Michigan State University or Ribaldi? Is, is that what you're saying? So you're telling me that if I'm a cop, I have no gun. Right? But also, this and I'll, well, he said, he said to the community, like, maybe no, no, I no, no, that's not what maybe, he said. Maybe, maybe like, the prompt is, or should cops be unarmed? Hold on a second. You just got done watching probably the most tragic incidents in the, probably historically, Ribaldi, may I add, just, that's kids, for crying out loud. And what you're sitting here saying is, is that we shouldn't be in our, what does it do? Would you like me to do if someone has an AK-47 killing kids? That's my question to you. We actually have our own rights, you know, that we actually have our own rights to carry and defend ourselves in certain situations okay. like that. You yeah, know, but with all due respect, that's not the, que that's, that's not the question but, I'm but asking. But if you want to use your body. No, I'm asking you if you were, okay, I'll ask in a different way. If you're a police officer and you have no firearms, you got your pepper spray, you have your taser, you have your, uh, your baton, and you are responding to Obaldi, elementary school where there's an active shooter with an AK-47. What are you gonna do? Um, I would say that I would call for backup to the proper authorities that would be entitled to have those weapons that True. are not in, in the general community. I, I, get, what, I, get what what, what, I get what you're saying. No, but what entitled to have weapons? Who? What agency? So like, uh, like the UK. And above. You yeah, know what are you saying? Well, well, exactly like United Kingdom you know? how United Kingdom, their special force right, and their, their, in their police saying. department but, have yeah. weapons, but they're yeah. right with So why should you just be, why should you have the ability to just tote around a gun? That's my question to you. What's that? My question to you is just because you're a cop, why should you have the right to tote a gun around just because you have a badge? No, no, no. That's not what you, that's not what the prompt is. The prompt is cops being unarmed. Yeah. Cops being all yeah, of us. Yeah, but you use your body. And your body, um, they took in, like over an hour to if respond me, when, when they were there. He so you had the guns question. and you still didn't What I'm sure saying is, is that he's saying that cops. Yeah. Cops is a very, t when you say cops to me, you're talking everybody. Every single cop, okay? And you're saying we shouldn't be unarmed. Okay. You shouldn't have guns at all. Okay, so you know what? Next time uh, there's a big uh, active shooter going into a university, then so I, I guess we're not, we're, we're just gonna let him shoot all the students. So I have a question for you. So all the other, all those countries that don't have their um, police officers carrying guns? Not many, just so you know. Oh, I know very well, that's the work that I do. Okay. So, and even been there to see that. But what I'm saying is that, have you ever thought about how those countries respond to those situations? And can we do the same? We absolutely could not do the same because we uh, have we have criminals <laughs> here, and, and I'm not speaking of y'all, but there are people here that still carry regardless of if it's against the law. If you were to take guns away from illegals, criminals, people that, that are not from here, I would 100% agree that officers don't need guns so and that we could shooters? go because I, I think the mass shooters are not the ones, the immigrants, and the taking it no, all no, away. No, 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 yeah. and that's what, I'm just giving right. examples. Yeah, I'm but just so giving examples. Example. She's right. I mean, yeah, it's so the mass shooting and all that is. A constitutional right. right to bear arms, right, allows it's everybody right. in this country no, to bear arms. Well, not everybody, rare. not everybody. Let me be specific. If you're a law-abiding citizen to carry guns, the amount of guns that we have in America, doesn't it outweigh the people that we have? Hey. These countries, they don't have a second amendment, they don't have a constitutional right to bear arms. So it's a lot easier to say, you know what? Y'all can't bear arms, so y'all can't bear arms. In this country, we can. So I'm just being, like I said, everything is anecdotal. I've been in situations where I needed my gun, yeah. and you were absolutely right. Would I do the job without one? Hell no, because I've been in situations where I needed one, I and you know what? I had it. It's equal force. I'm being shot at, I'm about to shoot back. Not just, hey, I have a gun on my hip, I'm just about to, you know what, guns, 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 that's not how I do my and, job. And, and the thing that popped right from that prompt is just active shooter, active shooter, active shooter. That's... Right. And it's, and not, even, right. to your it's question, not even to active your question, shooter, you know it's what? just being shot done, at by yeah. itself. In I haven't itself. done the research, or I don't know if there's any empirical data to know exactly in other countries how they respond to someone who has an AK-47 
that goes into a building and starts killing people, and yet we're a police force that doesn't have any farms. I don't know. I would have to do the research. Force. They do have special units where they're just not out in the street where you see them all the time, 24-7. Okay. But you said something, and I want to bring it up. Hold on one sec. You said something. You said that the people with the guns are oftentimes criminals or, you know, people like that. And I want to say that those mass shootings that, are, that happen in our country are from people that pass a whole tons of background checks and um, are law-abiding to your point and all these things and all of a sudden, and that was my point earlier about when people snap or whatever might happen. And we have to be clear in identifying that because we get labeled like we're the ones doing all these mass shootings, all these things, that, these the horrible, egregious things. And 90, 96% percent of the time, yes. it is right. not right. a person that was formerly right. incarcerated. And to your point, had a, we, we get so labeled. So let's be clear on that part. Right, and then we get yeah. labeled as killers. Right. Uh, I think I've but heard so, agents of racial genocide is what we've been labeled before, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And, and all this, when, and, and again, my point was just, I'm talking about one specific yeah. type of, you know, incident mm -hmm. where, yeah. you but know, we have to I pay think attention everybody to would that, agree. Though. I think everybody we would agree. We all like have, to have to pay farm. attention to that, though, and be clear and be very honest with that and, 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 and identify it and not try to like, oh, well, it sounds good and, it's, and, and let's get some, some news on this and let's just like label them and put everything on them because that's how we feel because that is actually what's happening. And then when we know the truth and the facts and it comes out, it's like that person was never been incarcerated, never had a record, never anything. And do the worst harm to our society, our communities, because believe it or not, the vast majority of us on this side of the fence want safety just as much as you do. Hey, good humans, Zach here, checking in to ask if you're doing your best to protect yourself from online crime. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to spammers, telemarketers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura provides all-in-one digital safety for your devices to protect you from online threats. They have almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, including a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, and more, all in one easy-to-use app. Aura does the hard work of keeping you safe online, and if you sign up right now by going to aura.com slash jubileemedia, Aura will give you a two-week free trial so you can start protecting yourself and your information. Be sure to check out the link in the description or scan the QR code to start your free trial today. Thanks so much to Aura for sponsoring this episode. Now, let's get back to the video. Police violence is blown out of proportion. I think that really depends on where you're at, whether it's city, town. I think it really depends on the department because you have a lot of departments that you see a lot of that stuff, but then you have like the smaller departments that you don't see none of that. And you have community policing. You know, we go out and we do activities with the kids. We do activities with families. Yes, we still do our job. We still pull people over, but we're not, I guess, what you would call harassing people in some of the, the, some of the ways that the big cities do. But I mean, you technically are though. Like, I mean, justifying your bad behavior and your violence for you guys doing community work, it just doesn't go hand in hand, you know? I understand people's sentiment where one incident where it looks extremely bad is wrong and then it casts an entire umbrella over the entire profession. I may have a different perspe uh, perspective or different perception of what you're looking at than you do because I'm in this profession, but the way that I guess that we look at things now in the media, it's blown completely out of proportion. So when we see the videos of a police officer handling a child and that cop has become violent towards a child. And I agree, but my thing is, has it been blown out of proportion? I see that one incident. We see like, it a lot. You do see it a lot, but you have to also uh, take in consideration that there's over 1,800 agencies in the entire, entire United States. So if you look at the big grand scheme of things as it relates to all these agencies, and you do see violence, you do see where it's scrutinized, where it's brutal. But if you take the numbers, it's, it's very, very minimal. If you look at all the public contacts 
with all agencies nationwide compared to these bad incidents or the perception of bad incidents. It's a very micro compared to the macro of how many public contacts all the agencies have well, with I the mean, public. Those, those are the ones that you do see. I mean, and bef the, and before and social media. And it was brought up earlier about the media blowing it up. And we agree, uh, we agree to that. There was, you know, Rodney King. There was Emmett Till. There was well, all these And people, you know, and you know? honestly, there's bad officers. Yeah. Yeah, and good officers will be the first ones to tell you there are bad officers. There's bad, off there's bad in every, every workforce it's that a, you're a, in. A everything. If it's bad... It's bad. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You know, we are the first ones to kind of, hey, you know, that's that's too far. And I used to work in internal affairs, and I personally arrested two uh, prior police officers. I also worked in internal affairs, and I can tell you out of 30-plus of these um, tribunal hearings, uh, a lot have been terminated. Uh, so there is some accountability. I think we're heading in the right direction, considering 20-something years ago, you know, you did something bad and, you know, it got sweat. Now, social media obviously has magnified it by hundreds and hundreds, which is good. Well, what social media has done is just allowed everyone to see what's happening in the moment, right? Before, we got it weeks later, months later, years later, so no one knew what was going on. But now we have the ability to film it in the moment and say, hey, look at this and this is what's being captured. And violence that's perpetrated against people, who, whether they're doing something wrong or not, is so... I mean, it, it, it's to the point where it's not even harmful anymore. It's tragic. Why? Because we're all human beings. And there's a culture of violence that perpetuates within the department itself. And I've had good cops reach out to me, reach out to me and said, they're not listening. And if I say it, if they know I'm saying anything, I'm gone or I'm going to be hurt. Police violence is completely blown out of proportion. Um, in a sense that it's completely biased. Why isn't nonviolence or me saving someone's life mm -hmm. not blown out of proportion? Can the disagree step forward? I don't believe it's blown out of proportion because I believe it's just barely getting the exposure that it needs. It is what it is. That's what it is. Each, each time I've encountered the cops, it's, it's just been like the most negative experience of my life. Like, uh, I, I'm addicted to the news. And uh, every time I turn on the news, it's another cop killing. Like you said, maybe they, they don't uh, report what's good out there, but they do report the bad. And I watch, I watch it every day of my life. Like, I see how the cops treat people. If I may ask you, if you did see the good, would that give you a different perception about the police? It's not that I don't see the good. It's that it just doesn't... I haven't seen it happen. I haven't experienced it. I haven't had, heard nobody in my community, like, right. have anything... So I've seen before. the good. When okay. I was 16 years old, I'm in my 40s. I actually had a police officer who was my hero. Every contact since in multiple states, multiple divisions has violated me, stolen from me, taken from me and stripped me of every value I ever had. The way y'all talk to me, the approach, I'm so respectful. Mm -hmm. 18,000, that's what you said, divisions? No, 1,800. 1,800? How many prisons are there? And how many inmates? And then we're disarmed when we come home. We can't vote, so I can't compete with you on my laws. I can't carry a gun. I can't defend myself. I can't even carry a knife. The exposure is barely there. We need more exposure. I'm from the L.A. County area, from the islands of Hawaii originally. Every police in between them seas to the East Coast has always spoken with disrespect. They don't pull us over on a speeding ticket, like, hi, how's your day, how you doing? Do you got any emergencies going on? Yeah, they come with their guns. When's the last time you was arrested? Who, me? No, I'm just saying, that's the approach <laughs> when you come to the car window, right, is on guard. I don't talk like that. So I hear where you're coming from, but I don't talk like that. So some people do do that. Mm -hmm. You talk for them, but you said us, you just pointed at us and said us. The department. I, all well, departments. All I don't know which department they work for, but I work for a department, and it's, I've never seen these, person, these people in my life. I've never seen you in my life. I've never encountered you in my life, but I wouldn't come at you like that. So you don't cuss at people when you walk up to them? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. When I walk up to them, no. Now, if they're cussing at me, I might cuss back. Absolutely. I'm going to allow you to dictate how you're going to allow this, this interaction to go. What if I speak to you with respect, and you go back there, and you pull my license, and it says you're parole date 2036? You're still going to get treated with respect. Walk up to you? I've never. Not one time. So you guys are four come, out of hundreds. Come, you can come do right-alongs with me. 
me. But what I'm saying is, I'm coming to you. Oh, what are you on parole you, for? Yes. I'm on parole for this and that and the your third. Your computer doesn't now, tell if you're you an asshole, that's my response. If your you're computer an doesn't tell you, you got to do your job. Yeah, and the, dynam like. the dynamics change because everybody's got body worn video now or dashboard video and everything's recorded. Yeah, All these the contacts. You guys have them. That's exactly why you guys have body cams and dash cams. Because even your own departments don't trust you. It's for transparency. So if I do something, the public knows why I did something. That's what it's for. I grew up in the era of body cams, so I'm fine with it. Yeah. I turn it on every single time. I've had people say, hey, this person is rude, this person, this and that, and the third, and they watch the body cam, did nothing that they said. Bingo, and I'm But technology is policing you, so technology has little air. Human beings are policing us in the community of a community that you don't even know our values. You come from 30 miles away is a difference in the values. So I believe that it does need more exposure beyond the cameras that y'all. Well, hold. I think if it if you're gonna say it needs more exposure, I think the good side also needs more exposure. Yeah. I think policing in a whole needs more exposure. I mean, I grew up with that in school, dare programs and all these false hopes. But that's not the dare that's program your exposure. has nothing to do with patrol and being out on the streets and working with people and families out on the streets. I see the good in policing, but I also see the bad in policing. Mm -hmm. So. Like I said, if it's gonna, if it, if this one side needs more exposure, I think it all needs more exposure. I grew up in the community. I'm not judging you, but yet you see me with a uniform, you automatically judge me, and I don't think that's fair. Well, that because that comes from her experience. That's that's what she's trying to say. It's like as soon as the uniform is put on, the badge, it's like, and for and most, because I'm in that work. Right and I see it, and it's like the ego comes in, or that power, and as human beings, we must feel like we're in control. That's just, it just seems to be an innate thing within all of us. Oftentimes, people with titles and roles allow the titles and roles to justify what they do. The good is there. The good is there, there's four of you right here. <laughs> You have some conscience. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I'm here. Committing a crime is never justified. Does anybody agree with the prompt? No. Okay. I mean, everything is a crime now. Can the disagree a step forward? That prompt, it's a very open-ended question. I shared my, a part of my story earlier about the person, the officer, who was there to protect, serve and he committed a crime against me. Was he justified? Because he's a police officer, a detective. I forgave him. And so that's why I couldn't step forward because I had to pause for a second. I just, I, I have to take a neutral stance here because that's not our reality. Um, I was 14 years old and I was deciding to not go to school and my stepdad came up and yanked a cover out from underneath me and I hit the ground off of a bunk bed and I got up cussing him and he slapped me across my face and I was the one that was taken to juvenile hall. But damn it, my crime was justified. Mm. You know, I think with anybody, with any crime that is committed, there's a reason, there's a background, okay. there's a story. There you go. There's circumstances that you have to find out. And us as police officers, that's our job, you know, and we'll, we'll take it from there. So none of you as officers stepped forward and felt like it was unjustifiable the minute that you put your badge on to commit a crime? No, no. Not I, one I, of you? I, I like she just asked for an instant. Right, I feel like some things are justified for basic survival. I'm just curious if out of like, four of you didn't have that one concept and you took an oath to protect and serve my community, his community, your community, her community, and not one of you stepped forward. I was going to step forward and challenge it. I hesitated and went back because I wanted to rethink it. Not one of you felt like when you put on that badge and that tool belt that there was no justifiable reason to commit a crime because it'd be self-defense, right? Some, some things are just, like I just said, basic survival. Food, I deal with, food. I deal with yeah. transients all the time, right? Uh, they go and steal something. Yeah. My department requires me to do something when somebody steals something. Now, right, I have a do, I, do I think it's right? No, but he's hungry. I got, I have, it's my job, so I have to do something or I'm gonna get fired. Can I pull out my, my, my card and, and, and pay I've for done it? That. No, yeah. I, I've done I, that. but I can't. My department doesn't allow me to do that, so I can't do that. I have to do something. They say, hey, I want him to go to jail. He's going to jail based on what that person said. With your situation, mm -hmm. if she would have took the knife to the officer, that's justified to me, mm -hmm. right? In my eyes. 
Yeah. They're, um, now, do we ha justify being justified and dealing with the consequences are two different things. I'm totally accountable. My years in prison made me 100% accountable for me in every action that I do and every thought that I make. Um, so I've served federal and state prison. I have a parole until 2036 for narcotics. I've never hurt anybody. Nobody's ever overdosed from my drugs. I just got caught under the Reagan laws. I was raised in there. I've created my deepest friendships that I have in there. I've left women behind in there. The problem is, is that when I found myself in trouble since I've been home, the last number I would call is anything with 11, 211, 411, or 911. My loss of faith and belief in the whole, whole entire police community is gone. It ain't no 2% of you in my eyes. There ain't no 1% because you might be a hero one day, and then 16 years later, back against the corner, lose everything you stood for, and it happens, we're humans. Just a prompt, anything that you've done to, to get you where you were was never justified? Uh, if you look at justifiable, no, I was greedy. I was taught a hustle. Uh, but why did you start? Because I was hungry. You were justified, but you're still gonna get arrested. That's what I'm saying. No, I don't I, justify it. I'm accountable. See, there's no, no, a no. difference. You can't. You're not, that's not what I'm saying. I understand where you come from, but I'm still going to arrest you. I'm still going to do my job. Because this is a job. Yeah, I'm so still going to do it. So I understand your story. I hear you, but you're still going to jail. That's what I'm saying. Is it justified? I get it. You were hungry. You had to do what you had to do. You had to do what you had to do to survive. I get it. But you're still going to jail. You're doing a job mm -hmm. that the department told you to do. Right. You just said that... Yes. Would you want it to come out your pocket to probably feed the person that was stealing something because they're hungry? Because in your humanity, you know what it's like to be hungry. Agreed. But in your job, you know that if you don't do what you're told, and the, 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 right, the, the procedures and you're stuff, gonna that you're going to get in trouble. You probably lose that job, and that's not something you want to do because you also have to feed your family Agreed. and feed yourself, right? Absolutely. So I think we can all agree some of you have good intentions, and you go, go in with that but it's a department that has a culture of violence, you can't help but to pick up some of those traits. A number one, because you want your job. A number one. So I served 27 years in prison, in a maximum security prison for women. I had a sentence of 25 to life for the crimes of kidnapping and murder. That's what I was convicted of. Did I do it? That's a different story. No person that represented a system helped me. Punishment has become the response to every damn thing in this country. Because it's like we're out in the street living every day to survive. We're out in the street doing our own thing. When you guys as colleagues come after us, like at what point does it justify your colleagues to do all that stuff just because they have that badge? When y'all colleagues are shooting at us, how does that justify you guys' crimes? That's what I understood from her. Who, I understood, like, policing? when you guys are, yeah, I'm totally, that's what I got. Yes, I'm, I, I was agreeing with what she's saying. You're out in the streets, and, you know, you guys come and do all this and that. Well, who's calling? Who's calling us to get to where you're at? All right, let me give you a perfect example, all right? Okay. Let's say I have a broken down car. You know, okay. I have a broken down car and uh, nobody called you. You just happen to see a broken down car and I have my emergency lights on too. So I'm declaring that I'm having an emergency situation. Okay. You see me out and about, I'm on my phone. I'm in a safe area on this side, on the right side of my vehicle where I'm not in imminent danger. I'm following all my protocols. Let's see, I even go as far as putting a road flare or a, a cone from like a, a traffic kit. I cover all my T's and A's, you know, I'm literally trying to avoid you because I don't like you. So I'm doing everything I gotta do, but here you go. Woo, 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 hey, what's up? Do you need help? And I'm like, no, sir, I don't need any help. I've called AAA, they're on their way. I verbally communicated with you mm -hmm. that I'm good. I'm in no imminent danger. I've put my cones up. I'm waiting for AAA. I've relayed to you, verbally communicated that I'm okay. I'm not bleeding. You're not seeing anything going on with me that would attract you to come after me. But here you are grabbing at your belt, pulling at your thing just seeking for something to go after. Immediately see, like, you're like a predator, bro. You're literally okay. hawking eye into your target and you're like, I'm gonna get him. Boom, and then here you go. You been drinking today? I'm like, bro, I just told you I don't need your help. Like, I'm sitting here waiting for my, my, my trip away to come with a flat tire because I got a wheel lock. Okay. Oh, so, but have you been drinking today? Are you on probation or parole? Immediately it's like, dude, I'm in distress. Right. I've advised you I don't need your help. Right. Put up all my flares, crossed right. all my T's, dotted all my I's, but you continue to push the subject. Yeah. Have and you ever you go as far as like pulling your gun? Let me, why are you getting hostile, sir? Yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't Click. happen. I'm just saying. Why are you getting hostile, sir? <laughs> Click. Good. You good? Yeah, so. I feel like is... you're getting hostile, sir. Put your hands where I can see them. Click. Okay. There we go. So, 
I'm going to tell you what I always just say in the streets when I well, work I mean, patrol. Do, do we agree here? This is what I was going to say. I'm going to tell you what I always say in patrol. You know, and this is what I said in my earlier comment where we get painted with this broad brush. First of all, I would have given you a ride. When you say you, I just want to make sure and be clear that me personally. That's why I have triple A though. I don't hold, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that in my mind, you're speaking about me, me personally, I would have helped you no matter what. But I don't okay. need your help. I've advised you verbally. Roger that. Told you. That, that, that's fine. You were and you know away, what? And, and I would have went to Starbucks. I would have took off when and went to like Starbucks and got a cup. <laughs> I would have took off and went to Starbucks and got a cup. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is that I'm going to tell you what I always used to say when I used to work in the streets. You know what? I can't speak and I can't feel what you feel. So why did you? Let me finish. <laughs> See what Let I mean? me finish. You, you guys are predators, bro. Uh, you're exactly. Not, yeah, Nobody you're called. Who called you? You're not letting me so finish. So who called you? You're not letting me but finish. But that was my question. That was no, your no. question, right? Who called you? Did I let you, you speak? Oh, go ahead. But nobody called you. Can, 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 can I speak? Can, can I say we, something? Can, I, like, he doesn't understand. The, can we get a little protocol here, the Q&A, no, no, where he talks and then I talk? Yeah, because he's not letting me talk. Okay, you can respond and then okay. I want to hear from Scott and then yeah. we have to go to the next one. Can you just let, please let me finish? Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm answering the valid points validly, you know. You're not letting me, you know what? Disregard. It's, it's good. We you don't gotta be, but you know, I gotta, saying. I gotta say, like, what I'm trying. But to, you gotta have more patience as a police yeah. officer. Well, no, it's, you're, well, you just got a quick snap, and I can no, see it. You always no, gotta be no, right. Like, no, you, I'm just you, you used don't to argue. Right. When I argue, I always I let, I always bad. let the person speak as much point. as you can. I think he's one. And then once the the crime that was committed, like when I was a kid, um, I wanted to be a cop. I saw the cops. They were. I grew up in the '90s, um, so they would give baseball cards, and I, I thought the cops were the coolest things because I had like. I had a, a real, real bad childhood, like with my parents, and mm -hmm. I didn't really have um, friends like that, but the cops would be there. Mm -hmm. But the second I got my lowrider bike, like the cops would pull me over and give me tickets, and I'd be like, why don't you stop them over there? It's like, well, we're stopping you, how are we gonna stop them? And then I would get tickets constantly. I was just a kid, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I liked the lowrider culture, and they would give me tickets all the time. Then my parents would be like, why are you getting tickets? Like, I'm like, I don't know, they just keep stopping me. And then like, maybe I'll ditch school and the cops will like, you know, like sometimes they'll get me from a certain neighborhood and t drop me off in a, like far away from my house. Like, mm -hmm. or sometimes, and I was a minor and they'll get me from the streets and take me to the police station, which I found out later was illegal there. And, and mm -hmm. they made me to who I, who I, who I am. Mm -hmm. And they made me think that I was a bad guy until like I realized almost like 13 years ago, I, I don't gotta be that bad guy no more, but the cost made me who I, who I was. And I'll share, like, I, I've never, like, I've never served any time like that. I was arrested as a 13 year old, you know, literally I still looked like I was 10. I was smoking weed at the park and I got immediately apprehended, taken into custody. I got handcuffed behind my back. And then um, I got placed in a cop car with no, no divider. It was like a park cop, you know? So no divider. And then when he asked, he started asking me about my name and stuff. So I was like the adolescent, you know, adolescent phases. I didn't want to answer him. I didn't have to. Why, why not though? He's a I, minor. I, because I'm a that, minor. You don't, a, have to, you don't have to interrogate me without my parents. You don't have that's the correct. right to talk to yeah. them. That's incorrect. You committed a crime. <laughs> See, but I mean, you know. But I don't think you're well. All right. You, so, one, second, one second, one second, one second. One second, gotcha. gotcha. So without the, without the barrier and he kept asking me questions and I just simply didn't want to answer him. I didn't have to at that point, you know. So he got upset that I didn't, you know, volunteer with whatever his demands were. And he just punched me in the chest as a handcuffed 13 year old kid, knocked the wind out of me, whatever, you know? It went as far as violating my rights. I never even knew that I could have told his commanding officers or even the watch commander once I got to the jail, yo, this guy like sucker punched me in the chest. Like he knocked the wind out of me. He abused me, he abused a minder. I didn't know any of that. Now that I'm an adult, because I'm a felon, because of course that, you know, escalated into more things like getting marijuana. And marijuana was hella illegal back then. So I'll be damned if you guys mess with me like all over again. And that has happened to me. I, I get it. I'm That's why saying. I got road flares in my car. That's why I keep like a kit. You I know? get it. I, I, I cross all my T's and dot all my I's, dude. Criminals who commit violent felonies don't deserve certain legal rights. You know what? Um, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Episode no more. It's not making any sense. The, the questions just don't make sense to me. I, just, Sorry. I can't really get my point across how I want to. And the, the questions are kind of like reversed. Like it's like you're asking the question, but you kind of. I, so I, I, I can't do it. I, I totally understand. So I can't do it. You can always share whether you agree or disagree. Well, I to, everybody's talking over each other. I, and I, so can't, I can't be on camera doing I, it. I, I totally understand. I'm trying to get my point across that the police, you know what I mean? But I can't do that. Yeah. Like I can't do that. And I can't even get my point across. There's no point in me being here. So, so it, I'm out of here. 
Can we take a smoke break then? Let's take a smoke break. <laughs> oh, I can? Oh, yes. I fear the other side. Step forward if you agree. You know, I think um, it's part of their job to put fear in us, but it shouldn't. You know, every time, I, just for a traffic ticket or just being stopped on the street, it was always like guns drawn right away. You know, and every time they point their guns at me, especially towards my back when I'm not even looking, like it, it just gives me this fear. Like, and then not only that, they like to manhandle you. They like to like grip on your, your knuckles when you, I already know the procedure. I spread my legs and I try to do everything right. And they still try to manhandle you each time. They try to like hold you so you could react and do something. It's like that, that it's like their job is to incriminate us. And every, for every traffic ticket, it was always like, I always had my driver license, my insurance. So every time they would come at me, I'll start cursing them out. Like that was me, that, that, that was my whole, from ever since I turned 18 to I was like 30, I was just cursing them out every chance I get and I will love it. Cause they'll give me a ticket each time and I'll be like, okay, like I don't care. Like I'm paying for my freedom and that's, that was the cost of my, my freedom. But I did fear for my life each time. Every time like they manhandled me and, and, and talked down to me, all I would think about was my kids. Like them, if my kids wanted to see how these people act, cause my kids look up to me. But to see the cops like act this way and then laugh about it, you know, who are these people? Like they, they, mm -hmm. they, they bring fear to the community. They don't bring any peace or nothing like that. You know, and that's how I grew up. I grew up with so much aggression towards the cops, like so much aggression until I realized, you know what? I'm not who they, 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 they made me to be. I have a dangerous job, just like how you have children. I don't know if everybody has children. I want to go home to see my children, so I don't necessarily fear the other side. I just fear what could happen if I let my guard down while I'm doing my job, and that's it. Once you start off aggressive, I kind of have to match that because in the back of my head, why are you being aggressive? I have to understand, hey, he's being aggressive for some reason. I, I don't want to die. I don't want you to die. You don't want to die. I would hope that you don't want me to die. And we just meet in the middle right there. Yeah, actually, I, back then I would, I would hope a car hits, hits them or something because the cops would come out with their guns drawn. It wasn't even no, like, I'll just be spooked. And, and, and once they, 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 they come to me, I'll be like, you mother like, I'll just go off on them. In my younger days, like, I never just pointed my gun for no reason, but I was, oh, you know, what the f what, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now it's like, oh, okay. I mean, it's just interesting how all you guys stayed back there and didn't come. And I think you guys decided to come and show that you do have fear, but I don't think you guys really fear us, you know, the way I, we I, fear I, you. You keep saying that it's not you, and he's gonna keep saying that it's not him, so who is it, nobody? As if it's black and white, do I fear you? No. I don't, I don't even know you to fear you. I signed up for the fact that one day I'm gonna get shot, and 20 plus years ago, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I totally, totally understand that brutality and how we treat people, we treat them like shit. I get that. Fast forward 25 years ago, it, because of all that treatment that we did, now you have um, ambushes, you know, you got situations where suspects, you know, people are coming up to cops and just executing them. And, and, you know, so when the prompt says, you know, do I fear the other side. Well, yeah, I mean, the other side is someone who wants to take my life out and doesn't even know me. And I suppose that's a consequence of what happened decades ago where we did treat people like shit. I just had to say this straight. Let's be clear. What we're hearing right now, there's trauma, right? And yes. this is triggering. Oh, absolutely. Right? And so what we're going off of, our reality, what's happened and what continues to happen, it, it causes us as human beings to become defensive it causes us to become protective. It causes us to become things that we're not. But it we shouldn't. We weren't born to, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Exactly. Like I should not have to exactly. stay inside my house and become that, an introvert. And, and it's like, why can't I enjoy my freedoms? I'm a tax paying American. I mean, I know I'm a felon and I can't have certain you know, rights, but when, when does my fear of you guys impede me from living my life as a free American. I'm, I'm only 30 years old, so I'm dealing with the consequences of what people have done in the past. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I'm not like that. <laughs> so it's like, I, I get the trauma, but it's also like, I'm trying to change it, allow me to change it. You know, you know I, I do have to say something like, the cops from the 90s are very different from the new cops. Cause now they got a whole bunch of different races. Before, it was mostly whites. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what I had to deal with in the, in the 90s. But now it's a little different, I could say that. Can the disagree a step forward? I agree with this gentleman here about the job has danger factors. 
Um, coming across people out in the field in patrol, I didn't fear them because I treated them with the utmost respect and I treated them the way I would want my family to be treated if they were on the other end being stopped. I've had uh, arrestees uh, after going to the jail and processing them, get them food, whatever. Uh, a handful would say, you know what, thank you for treating me with the utmost respect. I honestly, I live in anxiety every day. Every time I see a black and white cop car, I get it. every time I see red I and get blue it. lights, I totally a get uniform, it. I hear a little too much keys, I hear a <laughs> I just don't, um, you know, little noises that come with your guys' uniforms. I sat up here for 15 minutes and was gonna turn around because I did not wanna be in a room with four people that wore that badge. And it's come to that much of a broken trust because I am the most friendliest human that you'll meet. I trust everything, even a stranger walking. As Soon as I see a uniform, I'm totally guarded and I live in anxiety because of it. Me with my parole, I could show license, registration, insurance with a smile. Oh, why you got a parole till 2036? Step out of your vehicle. Next thing you know, my little tiny belongings are on the side of the curb and it's not even getting put back together. Mm -hmm. And then I'm late for work. Now I got to explain to a job that hired a felon why I'm late because someone had a busy day and they saw that I had a parole date. If you don't know my trauma, I don't expect you to evaluate it. Right. But I don't expect a tough tone either because it might trigger me and then we both going to be all types of bitches. You know, like, yeah. what? Mother <laughs> totally. <laughs> you totally, know? Totally get you. So, what I want to know is how you guys feel about that, that we're scared of you guys. I hate it. Yeah. Because I, I, how do I gauge that? I don't know. I guess I have to keep continue to ask questions this and that third, but I'm like, why the hell? I'm, I'm just talking to you. Like, if no. I saw it, like I said. Because you, you can were... only put an a animal in the corner for so long before they fight back, but I think that's what, that's what the police wants. I think that's, they want a war. They want us to fight back, because I wanted to fight back so long until I realized I wasn't that person, and I had to just go my way, like follow the path that God gave me. And, and I had to leave that alone, but I did have a, a, a uglier path that I was gonna follow, but it's like, you know, the cops, it's like you guys make yourself our enemy. I don't enjoy conflict. Well, I'm I, telling you, well, we're all I, scared of you, and I all, everybody that. I know is scared of the police. When you interact with me, or with any of you guys, I'm gonna understand who you are as a person, and it kinda goes back to what he had said about match energy with energy, you know? But if, it was that, if that was the case, I mean, we don't really fear you, we don't. We're not scared. I'm not scared of you one bit. If I had a gun, we could both go at it. We'll do a duel or something like that, and we'll be even. Other than that, I'm not scared of you guys. But it's just the fact that a lot of times we don't have guns, we don't have knives like you guys think. You guys think we're ninjas that we're just gonna throw a knife or a fork and it's gonna land in your eye, and then you guys, it's, it, it, it's, that's not that's not reality. how we live. That's, that's not the reality that yeah, we. That we're badge on. gives you guys all the power. What community are you from? Because I hear Twain. Tennessee. Okay, so where do you police? Tennessee. You police in Tennessee? Mm -hmm. So do you police in the community you grew up in? I do. Okay, so out here in LA, it's pretty different. Okay, our police, right. like the beat, they might live there for 25, 30 years and live over here now because they've made it out. Um, or they might actually come from somewhere they wanted to police, but they send them to Long Beach. You know, so a big factor is that that badge that you put on, you took a responsibility that, to know that I don't trust you. Um, we can have commonalities. I probably can't have a commonality with you even if you said that it was your passion, other than if we could get to the, the uh, way above you, because you're like the bottom of the trickle effect of the system. Mm -hmm. I need friends way up Absolutely. there. Yeah. Once you put on that uniform and that badge, for me, I'm on guard no matter who you are. You're 100% right. We have a lot of work to do. Shows like this, us coming together and having this dialogue, it's only gonna try to get us, you know, not only just to middle ground, but to treat each other as humans. So we have a lot of work to do. I totally get it. I agree. Policing is necessary. Policing is necessary. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you don't do a cold like I that. Agree with you. <laughs> you cold, man. <laughs> I agree because I was kidnapped, raped, and tortured. And it was an off-duty LA sheriff officer who was out of jurisdiction playing softball. He, it was during payphone days. He saw red flags. He was policing. You know, he did his job. Um, he noticed damsel in distress, I guess. And he called local authorities and the gentleman got a double life sentence due to the um, horrendous crimes he committed against me. So I do believe that policing is necessary in certain perspectives. 
However, I'm going to be biased. I think that y'all don't need to police drug me. No. <laughs> so um, I do believe that there is a reason and a purpose for your positions. I'm sorry that happened to you, and I'm sorry that it happened to you. I'm a parent, and I have a daughter. I have a mother. I have a sister, and I would never want anything like that to happen. And what you went through was horrendous, and we have checks and balances in place for that. Uh, moving forward with a lot of transparency, I think there are a lot of changes in regards to issues with that. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, I personally arrested two of our own officers working in internal affairs for the crimes that they committed. Um, it didn't go over well, but it had to be done. And those are the checks and balances of transparency that these agencies have in place. So We are not a healed race of humans. We are not in a healthy place. We haven't been in a healthy place probably ever. But we have to get there. It's not working. It causes more harm than it does good. Because even if 100 police officers do good, it takes that one to do something so atrocious, yeah. so bad, that it just wipes all the good away. And it shouldn't. And it shouldn't, but it does. Hungry people are going to steal to eat. And that's the thing. We're not looking at the root causes of stuff. Yes, the four of you, what I'm hearing, you sound like really good human beings that have a job or chose a job to maybe you wanted to protect and serve and whatever else and knew that there was bad things that happened. You want to help with that. That's, I understand that. And it's true. But it gets lost and it gets murky when we continue to see the things that happen. Policing is necessary, but it depends on how you police. I do believe y'all need to be policed as well, though. I believe that you spend, you as police officers, spend way too much time policing us and not enough time policing each other. And on all the videos, 100% has shown the facts of what partners do. You know, they stand by, they don't police each other. They don't say, hey, stop, bruh, hold up. My homeboys, if I'm acting a fool and they know my felony, they're gonna stop me. They're gonna say, get back over here, Bonnie. Get, calm yourself, you got too much to lose. All the videos where there's one gone wild, we don't, we don't do that. not policing each other. Right, so to your point. Senate Bill 2? Yeah, well, not only that, yeah. So, yeah, they just, they just enacted duty to intercede so, or intervene, right? So, yeah, right now, you, you act a fool and you start acting up and your partner's there and you just watching, that's not going to cut it. You're going to get jammed up and probably get uh, terminated. Me personally, look, I'm in my uh, 25 years, 24, 25 years, I spent about 12 years in discipline. So I've worked in internal affairs and I prosecuted cops. Um, so I'm 100% with you. Uh, I don't think any of us here would like to have a bad actor or a liar, you know, or a murderer for that mean, or a rapist, or, you know. So that in it itself, it's just not tolerated whatsoever because we're trying to do what's good. Um, is police uh, needed? For me, on a personal note, I had a sister uh, who was molested and raped when she was young, my older sister, and she got heavily into drugs. She's a 27-year veteran of meth and um, ended up getting arrested. Uh, she um, ended up having to go through the system and, you know, I, I suppose at one point she got drug diversion. But at all those years of all those better, all those years that she did drugs, it really affected her physically to the point where she ended up getting ovarian cancer. And so two years ago, I lost her to terminal cancer. Um, my nephew, her son, uh, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> he also committed a lot of crimes. And you know what? If it wasn't for the police arresting him and going through the system, he probably will be dead right now. Uh, right now, he's at a ha he committed crimes out here in uh, Los Angeles, and he's now over um, in another state where he committed more crimes. And now, luckily, thank God that he's actually going through the systems at a halfway house, has been sober for, I think, over a year. So the police, for me, not just internally for what I did, but it's super necessary for others. I mean, we do need policing in a way, but not this type of policing. You know, that, that's it. It's just, this is not it. We need to find a, a, another way. You know, and, uh, you know, I don't mean to be funny, but I'm pretty sure you guys, uh, if you haven't seen the movie Judge Dredd, I mean, they get to the point. They don't take nothing personal. They do their job. They get spit on. They get 
talk back, um, and the cops just do their job. Well, they're judges, but not cops, but they just do their job. That's it. Nothing personal, it's just business, because it is a business, because everything that has to do with the police either has something to do with money or money comes out of it. But that's it, you just, you just gotta take the, the, person, per, the personal stuff out the equation, out the equation, I think we'll, we'll be all right. And I mean, compassion, it, it, I mean, it goes hand in hand, but like I said, just do your job and that's it. You, it, it don't gotta go nowhere beyond that. So you're 50-50. No, no, I'm saying, you no, think no, you, no, it's, you it's, it's, we should abolish this policing and start a new way? But you're for the police as long as it's a better system, is what no, you're I'm saying? No, I'm not for the police. It needs to be something else now. The the whole police policing, everything that has police in it, just needs to get out the way. It needs to um, be a new way of 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 going about things. So if you said you had kids, right? Mm -hmm. I have four. Okay, if my daughter is right. I need an officer that is willing to be my child's voice and hold the rapist accountable, okay? I was raped. None of my family believed me, okay? Nobody. But that one officer that I spoke to, that one cop believed me and made sure that everything was handled appropriately. And charges actually stuck. But what's the odds of you and that one cop? I've had I, I've lost all hope in 911 and calling cops. I don't care. My community can take care of whatever happens that comes towards my family. And I do believe that y'all need to police in cert, like in perspectives, but not mm, how would I say? Not yeah, like the badge and the uniform ain't working no more. We all agree that something we need something better. Yeah. Nah. I'm, I don't agree at all, not one bit. I, I literally believe like that we we should be able to um, take care of ourselves, fend for ourselves. You know, I mean, when this so country. You're, so if you have a three-year-old daughter that gets kidnapped or raped, your same situation. Well, I mean, I'm gonna go How out. How is she gonna defend herself? Um, I'm gonna become an automatic criminal and probably face charges for taking matters upon my own hands. I'm gonna fall into the cycle. And of, if you couldn't find the, the rapist or the kidnapper? I mean, to be honest with you, like I hate to put it this way, but I've been a victim of crimes that I've solved myself before you guys even got involved. And crimes have happened to me that I've delivered, literally I've delivered, I've handed cases to investigators and I've, I've done you know my thing. I'm not gonna go out and shoot people. I got too much to lose, but I will do my job and I will do what I gotta do because it's my stuff. I'm paying. My tax dollars are paying for you guys to do absolutely nothing. And when when you guys are called, I'm a, I'm open a beer. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna hang out. Yes. I'm gonna probably order a pizza. The pizza man will get there before you guys do. You're civil servants of us. When when at what point did you go from serving us? to harassing us? At what point did you go from serving and protecting us to making us inferior to you guys? At what point do we go from the people to, man, we're scared of you guys. And I hear you, honestly, I hear you. I hear everything you're saying. And, I have a better, I, I honestly have a better chance through. policing myself than I haven't called call you guys. Well, honestly. I'm sorry you went through what you did, okay? I will apologize for us as a whole, but you can't judge all of us. Oh, it's not just you guys, it's a whole history since you guys started. Like in 1777, when this country was built, there was no police. I have trouble, especially uh, being a black cop, is I have been through what you've gone through, yet when I try to be a better person, every time I talk, to somebody with trauma like what you're saying, you judge me based off this, but then expect me not to do the reverse to you. And I don't understand where that disconnect is. Well, the disconnect- If I, if I, were, to, if I were to treat you like, oh shit, this is just this is a Mexican on the street, right? All the time? I don't know you, so I've never done that. So don't say I've done that, right? But if I were to treat you like that, it would be an issue. Why do you feel okay to do that? Hey, this is a cop. He's gonna do the exact same shit. Everybody else did it before. I, that's not fair to do. It's not, but it's not fair to come after me when I'm just driving my car. I don't know you. The Constitution says that I have the right to enjoy my roads that I pay for with my and It says you have the right to travel. It doesn't say yeah, you have the right. Yeah, we travel freely. 
travel freely, that's the key word. Travel right? freely. Right, so you can walk wherever you want to go, but yeah. you can't drive. That's under the California Constitution. But we, that's neither here nor there. But what I'm saying, I would never... I, See, you this is... This, pay attention, guys. I want you guys to pay attention, right? I want you guys to pay attention, because this is a big problem right here. And, and he claims that he's not a problem and he's in the middle. But let me, let me point it out to you guys right here where the big flaw is. Every time that I've invoked my rights, this individual has chose to go around and still violate my rights. You guys Me? notice that? Okay. The same, the same persona, the same, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's not. Just, okay, don't, don't so can, can, can we move on to the last prompt? Because yeah, it feels let's, like let's it's go not to the next prompt. Okay. Yeah. Locking people up doesn't solve anything. I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally, middle ground. <laughs> Punishment is the response to everything. By punishment, I mean throwing somebody into a system that st does not address anything, any of the issues that the person might have had, the communities have, people with substance uh, issues, mental health issues, um, poverty issues. Let's be clear, poverty is a crime, right? But people are getting locked up for it because they're trying to manage and, and, and eat and, 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 and survive and just do, you know? And so we're not addressing anything that causes these ills. Okay, let's lock them up and throw away the key. That's the mindset, Lakes. that's how we feel because we lived it and we continue to live it. Yeah, I think we've gotten right? better. And, and right, and I feel like that's where now we find, we're under, getting Absolutely. this middle ground and this understanding that it is not the way solution. to do things. It is not the solution. Right. I feel like we're getting the blame for it when it's a system as a whole. You know, we don't have anything to do with what what happens. Or you're part of it. And well, yes. we we are part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You're the root of we, it. We we absolutely agree on that. You see, that's the thing that you guys say. Oh, we're not responsible, but then you say that. Oh, we're not like this, but I mean, no, no, we're like, responsible. No one's taking no one's taking accountability. That's yeah. one thing. I, I mean, you guys say sorry, you're apologizing for them, but. Where are they? Like, you know, it's like we never see them. You're the right. stage before intake. So you're the level before I go mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So when I'm put in handcuffs and going in, my last real human contact yes. is with the person who put the handcuffs on me. And not once has anyone ever, like, ever just had a compassionate, like, hey, I hope to see you make it out of here healthy. Or, hey, you know what? I'm. I'm we should have just been 70% for. God knows how long. Like 80 something. Yeah. I'd say Why? probably 80 now. In certain zip codes, in certain locations, it's probably even the 90 or 95 percent. So, from a societal, you know, point of view, absolutely, I think that you know, um, locking people up is not the key. As a matter of fact, all the prisons that they made in the state of California has been overpopulated for decades. There's money in recidivism. There's not money in reformation, and that's the problem. Is that you? You are trapped in a system, and so am I. Where it's all about a dollar amount on me. And that's just what it is. Like, you know, when I got locked up, like, I went in for weed. And when I got out, like, in two weeks, I came out, like, knowing how to steal a car. I made more connections with more criminals. I learned how to make a shank. I learned how to hide stuff. Like, I, I became more criminal going to prison, going to jail. All these, like, you just are surrounded by other in people that are doing even crazier stuff than just having weed. So it's like, I came out worse. And each time I would go, I would learn something even worse. So it's like, in there, it just makes you even worse. Like. Imagine like having a family for 13, 27 years, right? And then you come home and you're told you can't associate with them. Yeah. Like those are my friends and they're home, I'm home. We relied on each other. Violation, 10 day sit down. Oh, what's your name? It's all about the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. All my support is stripped because they're felons. What support do I have? Not y'all, not the felons. I'm in the middle line too. Who supports me? My job. We need some help on, all, on both sides at all levels. Um, going back to what you said about financials, yeah, it is. It's at the legislative branch that where they need to make these changes and it's gonna trickle down where it affects all of us on both sides. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And we have, not, we have not really brought the elephant to light in this room right now. This system is not ours, right? It was created before any of us here. Um, was designed to continue a, a form of slavery, period. The vast majority of the 2.3 million people in Am American prisons and jails are black and brown people, period. It's broken and 
I don't see our generations being able to fix it. Take, I don't see the next generation, but I will tell you, <laughs> I will do my part as an individual to uphold and treat everybody with respect, as I'm sure all three of these guys can say as well. You know, I didn't know y'all from Adam. I don't know them from Adam, but here we are. We're having conversations, we're having debates, and I will still treat you guys all with the same respect. And thank you so much, guys, for being here. Yeah.